Hey guys, today we're going to talk about some of the enzymes that are elevated with liver and biliary tree damage. So we're going to create a little flowchart if you want to follow along. If you have elevated enzymes, it can be one of three things. You will either have increase bilirubin, you'll have increase ALP, or you'll have most likely an increase in ALT, AST, the transaminases. Before we go further, I want you to know what each one of these means. If you have increased ALT, this is specific for liver damage. If you have increased AST, this can be liver or muscle. So you might want to order a CK. If you have um, ALP increase, this can be either the biliary tree or it can be bone, like prostate cancer, which is osteoblastic. And if you have GGT, it'll be specific for biliary tree. So now, if you have an increase in ALT and ASP, of course it's liver damage, so it can be various things. Let's start with the easier ones. Is your patient obese, meaning has a BMI over 30, or has diabetes? If your answer is yes, then this is NASH, which is the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. If your answer is no, let's go uh, ask ourselves the next question. So is the AST more uh, increased than ALT, about a two to one ratio? If that's the case, we need to look at albumin is albumin normal or low? If albumin is normal, we're looking at alcoholic hepatitis. If the albumin is low, we're looking at liver cirrhosis. Next, we're gonna look at the rest of them. The next category is, let's look at how elevated these transaminases are. So let's say they're above 10,000, which is incredibly high. What, are we, what we're going to look next, if that is the case, is um, substance abuse. Meaning Tylenol usually, or acetaminophen, same thing. If the answer is yes, then you've got uh, substance-induced hepatotoxicity. Easy. If you don't have substance abuse, then you're looking at ischemic hepatitis. Now, Next, we're gonna look at signs of infection. Do you have a history of IV drug user, any fever, any signs that this person could be infected? If your answer is yes, then we're looking at viral causes of hepatitis. So it can be Hep B or C, it could be CMV or Epstein-Barr virus. And lastly, we're going to look at whatever's left, which most likely will be hereditary. And these can include things like hemochromatosis, it can be Wilson's disease, it can be alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, or it could be something like Bacchieri. Now this is done, let's go to increase ALP. As we said, it's mostly going to be a uh, biliary tree. But first we need to evaluate, is the only thing elevated the ALP or mostly elevated ALP with barely any ALT AST? So if it's pretty much only this, we're gonna assume it's either a bone problem or infiltrative um, 
oops, trait of cancer, sarcoidosis, amyloidosis, multiple things. Um, if it is not just ALP that is elevated, we could have one of two things as well that are elevated. And that could be GGT being increased, or we could have an increase in direct bilirubin. So when we have an increase in GGT with ALP, nothing else, you can start uh, looking into autoimmune causes, which could be like primary biliary cholangitis and primary sclerosing cholangitis. For uh, direct bilirubin, usually this will mean there's obstruction. Now the question is, they're probably going to have jaundice, but the question is, is the jaundice painful? So painful jaundice. Well, if the answer is yes, then we're going to be having stones. Stones are painful. Why? Because they block the common duct and they completely back up into the gallbladder. And the gallbladder is going to get very inflamed and it's going to start hurting. And if nothing's going through, you're going to have stasis and stasis leads to infection. Now, if you don't have painful jaundice, then we're looking at something more like cancer or stricture. And what happens here is the blockage is not completely, it's not completely blocking the common. So we have a little bit of space to leave because it's, it's a cancer growing or it's a stricture undergoing. And when it goes up, it just dilates the gallbladder. But it's still, some of it is still going down. So this is not exactly painful yet. Now lastly, we're going to have increased bilirubin. You're going to have to separate this into either unconjugated bilirubin or is it conjugated bilirubin that's elevated. So if you have unconjugated, you're going to ask yourself, are these episodes, are these episodic, mild, related to stress? If your answer is yes, you've got Gilbert. Usually a student who's very stressed about exams and suddenly develops jaundice, but has basically no other symptoms. If not, then we're looking at uh, Crickler and Najar. Uh, but this one's very severe. Depending on the type, it could be you know deadly to even infants. And then if you have conjugated bilirubin, we're going to have to look at the urine uh, copro porphyrin. If it's elevated, we are looking at rotor syndrome. If it is not elevated, we're looking at Dubin Johnson. And remember, Dubin Johnson is going to have a dark liver. So they might mention that too. So that's it. That's everything. I'm just going to leave this here so you can take a screenshot. I hope this helps you guys. Study hard and I'll see you next time. Bye.